Welcome back. We have a fascinating guest today. His name is John Morrison. He is a pastor, an entrepreneur, an author of the book Life Hacks. You love talking about millennials. You are a millennial. Uh, you fall a little bit outside of that. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Well, thanks, Laura Lynn. It's mm. so it's great to be here. Just love the opportunity to come and share my story and serve your audience in any way I can. Well, you're hitting a generation that uh, some would say is a little bit lost, but tell me about your journey and how God has literally steered your destiny to be an influence nationally to a generation. Yeah, I mean, I am a millennial. I confess that to you. You confess uh, it. A millennial is anyone... Why do people say it like that? <laughs> well, I think because we get a lot of bad press. We do, So right. I'm kind of trying to reverse that Not a little that bit. Not that I'm a by... millennial, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So a millennial is anyone born around 1980 to 81 right. uh, at, to 2000. So to I'm just 2000. in there. So I can be a millennial to the millennials, but also can speak to older crowds as well. And I have to do that as a pastor every week. So... Uh, God got a hold of my life mm. early. I was uh, raised in the church. My mom made sure that we were in church every single Sunday. That was a priority for us. Mm -hmm. Though I didn't, it wasn't a priority for me. Right. I it still was a say, priority for your mom. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> she made sure um, that we were there at all costs, right? So right. I still say you can see my heel marks on the on this uh, <laughs> parking lot of my church that I grew up in. Because at. you weren't exactly willing. And, you know, that probably resonates with a lot of people who are watching right now. Like you're getting your kids out to church. They're not exactly happy exactly. about it. And yeah. so that was your journey. But you know what? It, God does something uh, through that. And, and yeah. one day, all it takes is one day. In fact, uh, now I look back and I talk to my mom. What was it about that? She said, you know, I, I baited you with Skittles. I, you, <laughs> I knew you could, Skittles were your weak spot. So, so you yeah. get Skittles during the sermon. Right, right. And she, she said. She bribed you. Yeah, and just made sure it was always fun. Uh, we always had resources for youth group stuff and anything that the youth group was doing she made sure that we were there she made sure we had I had friends there and like she'll she'd drive us there and so, so important as a parent she was very intentional about making sure that youth group was a part of my life so that when there was a conference this one uh, weekend I remember the speaker very clearly uh, was saying you know if, if you want to go the way that God has called you to be if you feel like there's a call in your life then you stand up because your friends are probably going to call you another direction but if you want to be uh, following Jesus, then stand up. And I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't remember anything that I was thinking in grade eight. I don't think right. I had many thoughts that were clear, but that one was clear hmm. that God had a call on my life. And so I remember standing up there at uh, Chilliwack Alliance Church where they are having this big youth rally. And that was a game changer for me for the rest of my life. Right. So 13 years old. That's right. About that. Yeah. yeah. I think That's... I was a terror for the rest of the weekend too, running around in all the different nooks and crannies and giving right. everybody a tough time. But during that time, God got a hold of me. And then hmm. He just that's, took my personality and we just ran with it. That's encouraging for uh, moms and dads who are fighting through the tough years of the teenage for years. Sure. Um, God really can impact a young person's life. I know that was the case mm. for myself as well. But, um, but it seems like those are really tough years for a, a lot of people and not always do we see such a clear decision. Yeah. in people's lives. Yeah, for sure. And and that's why so, so many people are a part of that. I think of the youth pastors that partner with parents. I think of mentors that even came around me at one time. I remember uh, at one point, some of my friends were saying like, hey, you're always going for lunch with these older guys and they're always coming around and, and helping you out. And who are these guys? And I said, well, these are guys from my church. And so I look back, it wasn't just my, my mom, but uh, youth leaders and parents and, and just men in the church that uh, took an interest in my life. And so mm. And I made feel a difference. Like, oh, totally made a difference. So much so that I'm I'm realizing that part of what I do now in ministry is to think about how they help me so that I can pay it forward to other um, you know young leaders and, right. and even young people that I kind of identify. Like maybe this person could need someone to lean in a little bit. Yeah, here. I'm thinking about like a single mom who's watching right now who's saying I'm having the worst time with my 12, 13, 14, 15 year old. And these are some very intentional things that she could do. You know, going to church is free. That's like right. that is a privilege and a right of us Canadians to be able to do that. And in churches are really incredible people like yourself who are committed to helping young people get through those troubled years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's why the churches, I think, is the hope of the world. It's a beautiful thing for, for single parent families. But for, I mean, all families are struggling mm -hmm. to pass on their faith 
to the next generation, right? So was it easy from 13 year old, uh, you know, 13 years old and on, that it was just a piece of cake? Oh, of course it was, yeah, no problem. <laughs> no, I mean, I think my life is a constant wrestling with I wanna mm -hmm. go this way and God wants me to go a different way. Mm -hmm. So my dream as a, as a young Canadian kid was to play in the NHL. As a Vancouver boy, I wanted to be the first ever Vancouver Canuck to hoist the Stanley Cup. We got there close twice, but I never got close at all because God called me uh, out of hockey at the age of 20 where mm. I was getting a chance to play junior and then called me into ministry so that I could focus mm. my energy not on my dreams but on his dreams and mm. I mean that's just one example of a plethora that I could give you of God wrestling me wrestling with my will saying I've got something different for you right. and I'm glad he does every time it happens mm. I'm glad he does what what does it take to get to that place of surrender obviously you loved hockey mm -hmm. that was a passion in your heart but when God calls us to do something different than what we've had our, our eyes set on, mm -hmm. that is a wrestling. Oh yeah, but you know what? As a pastor now today of, of adults, I mm -hmm. get a chance, one of my favorite things to do is baptize people. Yeah. And I listen to those baptisms and every single time somebody says, you know, I had a plan and I, I wanted to follow it and I did follow it, it never ends well. Like not a single story to, to my, I baptize hundreds of people in my life it's never been like, I, I, I did it my way and it made all the difference and I'm so much better for it. It's usually, hmm. I did it my way, it ended up in brokenness and pain and tears and now I'm here to tell you that Jesus' way is better. Right. And I look back and I think, God, thank you for saving me, but by the hmm. grace of God, there go I. Thank you for wrestling me a little harder than you wrestled them, obviously, right. because I didn't have to make many of those mistakes. So just in following Jesus and listening to his voice and uh, you know, knowing that there is a call in all of our lives hmm. that he has for us. Was it always so easy? Did you ever wrestle with faith? Who God is? Is He real? Oh, I'm, that's such a great question. Mm -hmm. In fact, that is one of my the main trigger points in my story that I love to tell people is that I did experience a season of, of intense doubt. Mm -hmm. In fact, it came as a youth pastor, which is funny because you know I had a lot on the line. I went to Bible college for my education, put a lot of money in that, and then went and got like a career in telling people about Jesus. But then with the rise of the internet and social media, the exchange of ideas, and the rise of the new atheism, I was actually almost taken out where I saw these are some wow. very uh, you know, convincing arguments that they're making against my faith. And I had my own uh, struggles there. So I, it entered me into a season of doubt, which I look back now and I say, again, that was, that was Jesus leading me through that. And it was actually his uh, call saying, I've got more for you. Mm. Just like he did with Doubting Thomas, right? Thomas had his yes. doubts and yet uh, Jesus doesn't condemn him for his doubts. He welcomes him to see and discover the evidence. So Doubting Thomas gets a terrible reputation, kind of like Lazy Susan, right? Like, I think Lazy Susan was a genius to pass the food around <laughs> on a little tray. I sure. Mean, so Doubting Thomas, actually, I would say, like, I was a Doubting John. Right. Because I had these questions. But out of that, God led me into this amazing season of discovering the truth. I sold everything, went to go mm -hmm. study in England. I got to study at Oxford under some of the top names. People supported me once again to make sure my education could be reinvested into. And now I'm just going out and telling people like, if you have doubts and challenges, there is truth. There is a, a plethora of resources that we have as Christians available to us. Right. So, and do you cover some of those doubts and the answers in your book, Life Hacks? For sure. Hacks? Yeah, I actually have two books. One of them is called Life Hacks. And that's kind of a primer for young adults, something that I would have loved to have had as a young adult. Sounds but great. But I have another book called Clear Minds and Dirty Feet, which is again, my thank, my thank you to those who invested in me and to my mm. Oxford professors, because I wanted to pass it on in a way mm. that was easy to read so that people could access these answers that I had to find for myself. Well, that sounds like a great book. Thank you so much, John, for sharing that. I hope that parents will go out and get that, invest in a book like that that can help you to connect with this next generation that does have all of these questions. And uh, you've, you've done all of us a great service by investing what God has shown you, writing it down in a book so that yeah. you know we can all learn from it. Thank you so much, John. It's been Thanks. a a uh, real privilege talking to you. Thanks, Lerlin. And thank you as well for joining us. You can get a lot of free resources on johnmorrison.ca, hear his podcast and the information he's talked about today. Until next time, we'll see you then. God bless.